Wouldn't it be great if you could apply a super durable, scratch-resistant, polyester, UV-cured finish on an electric guitar without having to use any spray equipment or expensive UV curing systems? Well, with Solar Res Polyester Gloss Resin, you can do that, and I'm going to show you how in this video. Ultimately, the quality of your finish depends on how well you prep sand it in the beginning. I start with an 80 grit to remove all the tool marks and to level the surface. Then I'll move through 100, 120, 150, and then finish with 220 grit sandpaper. To pop out that grain, I'll use a water-based brown dye. Then I'll sand off the excess, leaving the dye just in the grain itself. For color, I'm going to throw down some vivid red water-based dye. I should also mention that I'm applying solar res in my garage slash workshop. This is actually an ideal place to do it because there are no windows in here. And because solar res cures by exposure to sunlight, uh, we don't want any sunlight pouring into the room. And you know, if that's uh, the situation you're in, you're gonna want, and you have a, like a big window with sunlight streaming in, you're gonna wanna um, close the curtains and close any doors to, to prevent uh, light from sunlight from coming in. I do have overhead lights, but they won't affect the, the solar res. Um, you do, however, want to make sure that the room is reasonably well ventilated because solar res puts off some pretty strong fumes. And for that reason, you're also going to want to wear a mask that is uh, suitable for protecting your lungs from chemical fumes. And I would also recommend that you, you should not have, uh, apply solar res in your living space because of the odors that it does produce. I'll be using two products from Solar Res to clear coat this guitar. The first is going to be their UV cured grain sealer, and then the second is going to be their polyester gloss resin. The UV cured grain sealer goes down first, and what it will do is it will pr uh, produce a sealed uh, surface and a barrier coat that the uh, polyester gloss resin can bond to. And when I say it bonds to it, it really glues itself to the surface. It's like it's welded. And that's important because the, uh, the polyester gloss resin can be somewhat finicky about adhesion, especially if you're using uh, an oily wood like coca bolo or if you've used an oil-based stain. To apply the grain filling sealer, I just pour a little bit out onto the body. And then I'll just use a cheap hardware store two-inch wide paintbrush to spread it around. And you might be tempted to use uh, an old paintbrush you've got sitting in the garage, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because when paintbrushes have been sitting around, they tend to collect dust and lint, which will deposit into the finish. I'll brush the grain filler over the entire surface of the guitar, and then once that's finished, I'll take an old business card and just scrape the excess off. All I want to do is leave the filler um, in the pores and the grain and then just um, distribute the rest of it in a thin film across the surface. As soon as I finish scraping it off, I'll take it out into the sun for 60 seconds until it's bone dry. Then I'll bring it back inside and repeat the process up to four times until I have the grain completely filled and the surface thoroughly sealed. Now it's time to brush on a single thick coat of the polyester gloss resin. I'll apply this in much the same manner as I did the grain filler using a brush. However, I will not be squeegeeing off any excess. I'm going to apply this stuff fairly thick and then I'll let it uh, flow out. Okay, so what I've done here is I clamped the guitar into a, a vise that's on my bench. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to let the guitar sit for the next roughly 90 minutes um, because that will allow the 
uh, polyester gloss resin to flow out nicely. Um, since I haven't added any kind of uh, MEKP catalyst to speed up the curing process, I'm going to be relying purely on sunlight to cure it. And for that reason, until it's exposed to sunlight, the resin stays wet. And as long as the resin's wet, it can continue to move and flow and that allows the brush marks to disappear and for the surface to uh, finish to get very even and smooth. Um, it also um, allows any vapor that's trapped in the resin to escape. Um, I've noticed that um, if you don't give it adequate time to level and rest, um, you'll notice there are tiny little pinholes in the finish and that's because there's vapor trapped in it. But if you let it sit for you know, a good 90 minutes, that's more than long enough for that vapor uh, to escape uh, from the resin. So um, I'm gonna be coming out here every couple of minutes and I'll probably flip the guitar body a few times just to keep uh, gravity in check because you know I can already see a few um, runs and drips forming which is no big deal because all I have to do is just brush those out and wait uh, five minutes or so and the surface gets nice and level again. But uh, my main concern right now is just to let it sit and rest and let that vapor escape from the finish. And then once that 90 minutes is up, we'll be ready to take it outside and cure it in the sun. Okay, so our 90 minutes is up and I am ready to take the guitar out into the sun and cure the solar res. Um, I'm gonna do this in two steps. First, I'm gonna take it outside and expose it to the sun for about 10 seconds on each side, and then I'll bring it back in uh, for about five minutes. Uh, what this will do is, um, as I understand it, um, I don't know the chemistry for sure, but uh, from what I understand, it helps to ensure that there won't be any uh, little pinhole bubbles in the, in the resin. So uh, we'll do that first, and then after that, we'll go back out uh, and then do three minutes on each side to finish the cure. As the solar res cures in the sun, you'll notice a slight haze spread across the surface. That's nothing to be concerned with. It'll disappear once you level sand and buff out the finish. All right, well, I've got uh, the solar is fully cured. And as I said before, I, I went outside and did an initial 10 second cure on each side and then brought it back out of the sun for five minutes and then took it back out for the final full cure uh, where I exposed each side for about three minutes and it is completely bone dry. So um, I'm ready for the next step and that is to start level sanding. So we'll get started with that. Solar res is a real challenge to level sand because of how hard it is after it's cured. Uh, it's much, much harder than nitrocellulose lacquer or um, polyurethane true oil, uh, water-based acrylic lacquers, and the other kind of products that we like to use to clear coat. In fact, it's, I almost liken it to sanding a sheet of plate glass. That's how hard it is. As a result, I have to start sanding at a much coarser grit than I normally would if I were sanding, uh, for example, nitrocellulose. Uh, usually with nitrocellulose, I'll start at about 800 grit. Uh, but with this, uh, with the polyester gloss, um, I have to back down to 220 grit to get started. And the, the, the strategy that I'm gonna use to level sand is a little bit different. Um, instead of taking the 220 and, and leveling out the entire surface perfectly, what I'll do is I'll sand it until it's about 75% level. Um, when you look at the surface, you, um, I can see that I have uh, kind of a, a consistent mix of dull and shiny surface. And the dull is what is the high spots that have been sanded. The shiny is the lower spots that the sandpaper hasn't uh, reached yet. So I just try to get is you know, the majority of it sanded dull, then I'll start to, to move through the grits and I'll go next to 320, then I'll go to 400. And usually by the time I'm done with 400, the surface is completely level. Then I'll jump to 800 and that's when I start removing a lot of the sanding scratches. And then I'll go on to 1,000, 2,000, 4,000. 
And you'll notice I'm not wet sanding. I actually haven't wet sanded a finish in years. Um, sandpaper technology has really improved over the years and now we have these no load papers which perform very well. You, you don't need to use uh, water as a lubricant or mineral spirits or whatever you use. The advantage of that is you can actually see your progress uh, more readily. Uh, with wet sanding, you have to sand and then wipe down the surface to dry it so you can see what you've done. But this, you can actually see it in real time. So it's a little faster. And um, it's especially uh, useful in working close to edges and, and on contours. You can really see what you're doing as you're doing it. And I think that greatly reduces the risk of sand through. So this is how the surface looks after sanding with 320 grit. Uh, there's a couple of shiny spots left, but it's about 90% of the way level. So I'm going to switch now to 400 grit, and that should take it down to the last 10%, uh, so it'll be uh, perfectly level. I've finished level sanding with 400 grit, and right now the surface is pretty smooth. There are no shiny spots left, and so I'm ready to uh, jump to 800 grit and begin the polishing process. Polish sanding with 800 grit is really basically the same as level sanding. The only difference is instead of looking at shiny spots, I'm looking for any uh, remaining scratches left over from the previous grits, and I'll work on those areas a little bit more to get rid of them. Um, right now I'm really not seeing too much. There's a couple here and there. Usually the scratches are concentrated around the perimeter, so those are the areas I really have to concentrate on and work to smooth out. Uh, the sandpaper that I like to use uh, for polishing at this stage is uh, 3M's uh, 216U. Uh, this is a P800, uh, and it's also called Free Cut Gold, and it's a fantastic sandpaper. It's low clog, uh, very consistent, abrasive grit size, so uh, you get a really smooth, scratch-free surface. I finished polish sanding with the 800 grit, and now I have a decision to make, and that decision is gonna be based on how I'm going to uh, do the final buff on the guitar. I use a buffing machine, which you can see there in the corner. It has two large buffing wheels, and I'll use a couple of different uh, polishing compounds to get my um, final high gloss shine. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using, um, these are Merca Abrilon um, uh, sanding pads, and I use 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 grit to finish, and the process is pretty simple. It's just a matter of sanding by hand the surface. Uh, because it's a foam pad, finger pressure is equalized, so um, I can get a, a pretty consistent sanding. And I'll work uh, through both grits. It's kind of hard to tell when it's time to move from one grit to the other, but I just make sure I give it a good once over, and um, you know that seems to work fine. And then once I've gone through the 4,000, then it's time to hit the buffer, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you're gonna be uh, buffing out by hand um, or maybe using one of those uh, foam pads on a drill. What I would recommend doing is using um, micro mesh sanding abrasives um, and that you, you'll want to go with all the grits from uh, 1500 all the way up to 12,000 and um, I think once you're done with the 12,000 you can um, start the process of, of the hand buffing and get a pretty nice finish. Um, I'm not gonna show that, that method because I use my, like I said, I use my buffing machine to do this. But if, if you're gonna do that by hand, I would recommend picking up a bottle of uh, 3M's Finesse It 2 rubbing compound. Uh, and that's what you would start with. That's your, your main uh, scratch remover. And then switch over to um, something like Meguiar's uh, plastic polish and that'll give you uh, the final high gloss shine. All right, we're done with all the polishing, so now we're ready to buff. Uh, my buffing machine uh, spins at 900 RPM and I use 
um, two 12 inch wheels on each side. This one is dedicated to coarse compound and then um, two more. This is a softer uh, 12 inch wheel, two of them on, on this side and those are dedicated to very fine polish. And what I'm using is, this is the Manzerna Brown and this is the Manzerna, I guess you could call that tan. I, I don't really quite understand their color coding but I know that this is very fine and this is coarse so let's get started. All right, I have finished buffing out the guitar, and as you can see, it's highly polished. This turned out pretty nice. And the other nice feature of Solarez is the fact that uh, this finish is, is bulletproof. Um, I have yet to encounter a finish that has the durability and scratch resistance that Solarez polyester resin has. And I think probably the best feature of solar res is the fact that I can uh, brush it on in the morning and have it buffed out to a high gloss shine in the afternoon. So there you have it. That's basically the techniques that I use for applying the solar res polyester gloss resin finish.